Well, clearly, you take the W, right? I mean, pretty much series has played out exactly the way I thought it would up to this point. I thought that we would be up 2-1. to one. Um, My thought was we'd lose this game 4 coming up. Of course, I'm hoping that doesn't happen, but it's the way I, I, I thought it would play would be with the games where we have the plenty of rest, which we have, if you look at the... Um, a nice rest in between two and three. I think Sunday's going to be tough. I think, um, I mean, listen, go, go either way. You know, if you think Toronto is going to go away, <laughs> just take a look. Folks, it was a 15-point lead with four minutes to play in the game. It was a nine-point lead with 90 seconds to play. And there we are with Patrick Patterson on the line prepared to tie the game and if it wasn't for some really advantageous whistles let me say this about this officiating crew these three guys see what their names are mike callahan scott wall and rodney mott should never officiate an nba postseason game again they absolutely suck and I'm not saying that they were in favor of one team over the other. I thought we had the benefit of some real critical whistles. Uh, but I also saw whistles on the other side. They they suck. I mean, I to me, there were at least a dozen ridiculous whistles blown in that game. If it wasn't for the bet, listen, let's talk about the will. I'm going to give him will because played a terrific game. He played like the Utah D-Will for most of the game until the fourth quarter crunch time comes around and there's a couple minutes to go and he becomes this passive, fearful, timid guy. Goes to the line. He misses three of his last four free throws and with 50 seconds to go with a four-point lead, the guy absolutely 100% fumbled the ball out of bounds without even a ounce of a question. The fucking referee is standing right there. Now, please, Net fans, don't be fluffers. That was an absolute turnover, and we've seen it how many times from this guy late in the game. Got double teamed in the corner. He coughs the ball up. They didn't even touch him. They did not even touch him. The ball goes out of bounds. If you watch the replay, maybe I'll put it up. If you watch the replay. Jason Kidd, when he sees the foul called, he puts his head down. He starts tying his sneakers. It's an immediate, like, you know, I don't want my face to be seen like, holy shit, we got a break. It was a horrific call. Coming down the other end, a couple, and listen, it was also, I thought it was a crazy call on Blatch, the rebound on the missed free throw by Livingston. He didn't foul a guy. Plus, normally in a playoff game, <laughs> refs, yeah, unless, unless there's a change of possession caused by something, you kind of let stuff go. Blatch went up, made contact with the guy, but the ball went right into the Raptors' hands. And then blew, the whistle blew. I mean, come on. I mean, it, it was just a disgrace. I thought they were uh, calling a technical foul on Vasquez. Are you shitting me? There was a, listen, I believe Vasquez fouled D. Will, although it could have gone an, another way. But come on, man. You're calling a, you're calling a technical foul in, in a close game in the fourth quarter in the playoffs. So I mean, what the fuck? Get Mike Callahan, Scott Wall, and Rodney Mott. Get him out of the rest of the playoffs. They suck. They are incompetent, complete jackasses who made at least a dozen, let's say, let's say a dozen ridiculous whistles, probably seven or eight in favor of us, four or five, you know, against us. Having said all that, you get the W, but man, you can't, you can't tell me that you felt, I mean, you were feeling great. Up 15. 90 to 75 with four minutes to go, you're, you know, you're like taking care of business. 
showing these young guys. I mean, to me, you're putting a stamp on them. Terrence Ross has lost. DeRozan, who was, I mean, let's see, he, he scored 30 points, but he was 8 for 22, so let's not go crazy. That's not a good percentage. Um, Lowry was outplayed by D. Will. You've been, you're beating them by 15, you're sending them home, and all of a sudden, man, you're in a fucking game. It's, I mean, you, how? Who who has a nine-point lead in their own building with 90 seconds to play and is in danger of two free throws being made by Patterson of a tie ball game? Utterly amazing how you could squander that. And this is an, this is an M.O. for this net team. This net team does not close. Mariano Rivera could come out of retirement and help because they are not a great closing team now. We can't be negative. They got the W. And the reason they got the W was because Williams was so effective for most of the game. And Toronto cannot solve Joe Johnson. They have no idea how to play Joe Johnson. I'm imagining they are going to automatically double him. The problem is he's 6'7". And he is not a selfish player. He's a gifted passer. When he gets doubled, he finds guys usually, and if we knock down those shots, you know, there's, there's really no reason that Joe Johnson can't get whatever he wants against the squad. They just can't guard him. None of them. There isn't one positive. They tried Salmons. They tried Patterson. They tried everybody. They tried to the guard. None of the guards can come close to guarding him. And that's really what our advantage should be going forward in, in, in against any team. And you have Williams and Johnson. I know Johnson's technically not considered a guard, but he has been his whole life. And they throw Livingston into the mix. you got size where you should be able to dominate almost every possession uh, some, some way, shape, or form. Posting up, backing down, double team, throw a pass. Now, Livingston was absolutely hor horrid. We're going to give him a break because he's been so great all year. But he was really pathetic. It also said he wasn't feeling well. But he played terribly. He... Uh, he also made a couple uncharacteristic turnovers. He had two turnovers, one late in a game where Garnett was supposed to pop. Arguable, maybe it was Garnett's fault. But Livingston was non-existent. The key, in my opinion, the, the, the biggest factor in this game, in my opinion, was And Andre Blatch, who really hasn't played well in a long time for the for the Nets. And to me, you look at his numbers. I mean, he was two for three, but that doesn't tell the story. He was very active. He got to the free throw line eight times. Now, he's an erratic free throw shooter, especially late. The guy was eight for eight from the line. I mean, you're talking about 12 points, uh, four rebounds. He had an assist. Uh, freaking dogs, I swear to God. Uh, had a big steal, too. Valanciunas poked the ball out of his hands when he was backing down in a low box. Um Teletovich made a, a big three, but otherwise really looked bad with his shot. Marcus Thornton, oof. Marcus Thornton looks lost, man. <laughs> he looks pretty. Two air balls on three pointers. Uh, Karolinko, kind of a non factor. Anderson, a non factor. Plumley does not look like he's playing well, doesn't look comfortable. Um, but you know what? In the playoffs, we usually talk about in an NBA game, you need five guys to play well to win. In the playoffs, it could be as little as three. Because your stars have to perform. And guess what? The net stars have performed. Now, Pierce was quiet and pretty bad early. A couple of a couple of sloppy plays. He was, uh, he was 0 for 2 from 3. But, you know, he had 18 points, 5 rebounds, 2 assists. I mean, that was solid. Pierce, D. Will, and Johnson carried low. Garnett, you know, 2 points, 4 rebounds. He did have 3 assists. I thought he made 3 nice passes early in the game. But uh, we could use a little bit more production from him. Obviously, got the crowd pumped up and doing what he does. Um, big game Sunday. To me, I listen. I can't say it's a must win because I believe. I believe they're going to fall. I believe we're going back to Toronto, two two, and I think we're going to win that game. So I can't call it a must win, but I would really feel very uncomfortable with a loss, going back to Toronto. Even though you're going to have the two days rest, um, let's get the W. Go up three-one. Got a cushion. Of course, you never want to give a team momentum, but you got a cushion. You go to Toronto, you lose. You're coming back to Brooklyn, and you know hopefully you learned your lesson from this disgraceful, this I mean utterly disgraceful fourth quarter meltdown. 
I mean, I, I'd love to look up in the history books teams that are home in a game three with a 15-point lead with four minutes to go. I mean, how many of those opposing teams? I know you can't really tell this stack, but I wonder if Elias had it. Can can you come back? What? How many teams come back to get within one down 15? Road teams, you know, where your energy's sapped. You kind of, all right, listen, we're supposed to lose on the road. Man, we just did a lot of bad things. We stopped, we stopped playing. We, we, we we're running clock. And I get you, you don't take quick shots, but, man, let's run some offensive sets in the end. This is kind of, sh this is a very scary theme that we got going on here. Uh, imagine the devastation of that loss. I mean, last year was the most horrific loss I've ever seen in, my, in the playoffs when it came to uh, late. You know, of course, there was back in the, the Jason Kidd era when we had the 20-something point lead in the third quarter against Boston and lost. That was brutal. But Chicago last year, you know, what, five minutes, six minutes to go, 18-point lead, CJ misses the dunk. This had all the same feelings except you're home and you're going, man, this would be colossal. They got it done. The W uh, was in the, in the column thanks to clutch free throws from Pierce. And Johnson, but uh, do you blame me for worrying about number eight in the fourth quarter? Do you blame me? I mean, what a day we'd be talking about today. Imagine if the referees properly called that turnover. Folks, he fumbled the ball out of bounds with 40-something seconds to go. Toronto gets that ball. They score. Imagine Toronto wins it. What we'll be talking about, D. Will, today misses three of his last four free throws in the fourth quarter and throws the ball away. This is why I'm never going to feel good. I, I got Jimmy Cole texting me, pumped up. Jimmy D. Will looks great. And I got a whole lot of net fans who love D. Will and talking about how great he is. Can you blame me for being a little, little pessimistic about wrapping things up? with this guy in control. For some reason in the fourth quarter, he becomes a different player. He becomes someone that is timid, and he gets sloppy. He does, doesn't do great things. I mean, he got a break with that turnover non-call. He got a break with the Lowry, or the, I'm sorry, the Vasquez foul when he went. I mean, that could have gone either way. And, of course, the guy misses three of his last four three throws, including an empty trip when he could have kind of sealed it. Sealed the deal. So, thought the crowd, although people were talking about the crowd, I thought the crowd was really not as energetic as I would have hoped. Now, I'm watching on TV. I'm not there. And I know it's a 7 o'clock start, so that's a problem on a Friday night. Probably tough to get there. But, I don't know. I was hoping for a little more electricity from the crowd. Hopefully, Sunday, that'll be the case. Let's hope for 3-1. Uh, Until then, leave me alone. And the other, how about the other series? I mean, is this NBA unbelievable what's going on? Houston, Portland, nobody's won a home game yet. Chicago, Washington, nobody's won a home game yet. Uh, I'm hoping today that Charlotte takes care of business, makes Miami work a little bit. We, the last thing we want is Miami to sweep and, and get their rests. We want them to... Uh, we want them to go a little deeper. It doesn't necessarily have to go seven, which I'm hoping, but at least five or six... So until then, leave me alone. Let's do it.